Well, I'm thank going you. to take advantage of the law for just a moment. Yeah. Uh, does everybody, is there anybody here who does not know what a Dibbuk is? If you don't know what a Dibbuk is, please. I, I saw the movie, but I can't remember exactly what it is. Uh, since you have been called by Lynn Bernstein, <laughs> Blitzstein's Dibbuk, and since the subject of your next talk is Dibbuks, <laughs> perhaps yeah. as a concluding thing, you might simply tell everybody what a Dibbuk is. So. Uh, well, you wrote an opera on it. You ought to know what it is. Why don't you tell me? <laughs> the speaker of the day. That's true. Um, well, I believe that the best interpretation of a Dibbuk is to say that uh, it's a spirit that's incarnate from a dead person in a living person. Why? Because of some unfulfilled vow that the living person must fulfill or do something about before that spirit can, can be satisfied. Rest. Can and, rest. And rest, yeah, or, or be expelled in some cases. Does that mean the previous person before he died had not fulfilled that? Yes. Is that the reason? Yes. I see. Now, the, in, in, in the most common use of the dip book, uh, we're talking about the drama by uh, Slomansky, uh, um, in which uh, two men uh, pledged their troth, uh, their, 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 their two children, their two children will be married. And then they forget about it. And then those two children fall in love. With each other? With each other. But the father of the girl thinks that the boy isn't rich enough, and so he finds a rich suitor for the girl and marries her. And the boy goes to the Talmud and, and the Kabbalah and uh, commits suicide. Hmm. And his, his spirit then inhabits the girl that should have been his bride. So perhaps does, one, does the body, does the soul only become a jibbuk if you die an unnatural death? Because That's a good Jewish question. Law, Pardon? What is the question? Does the soul only become a jibbuk if you die, an, if that, if the person with that soul dies an unnatural death? Uh, good in, question, in, because in, that certainly in applies the, to uh, Blitzstein. In, in the uh, Ansky play, uh, it is an unnatural death, <laughs> yeah, but a bad yeah. unnatural death. Yeah. And I think there's the assumption, uh, uh, at least uh, by Ansky, that that is a necessary precondition, that uh, that uh, there is uh, an evil that has to be exercised. Yes. And it was interesting, I once uh, was talking about uh, my opera to someone who, uh, a Catholic uh, woman who uh, uh, knew very little about things Jewish, perhaps as little as I did. Uh, <laughs> and uh, when I mentioned the exorcism, she. She was suddenly astonished uh, uh, because it had so much culturally. Uh, she was used to the idea of exorcism in, in Catholicism. Exorcism of evil spirits is apparently a fairly uh, normal practice that uh, uh, a certain number of priests specialize in. And um, you know, I don't think it's an everyday factor in, in uh, Jewish life, except for a very small Hasidic uh, minority. Yeah. But. Um, uh, there is obviously a, 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 a multicultural tradition of exorcism, and uh, I don't think the Catholics ever used the word dibuk, but uh, the idea of, of some kind of an evil spirit, which in the Hasidic tradition, uh, as Ansky interprets it, and as, as we get from it, it's a very, very specific situation caused by, uh, caused in turn by uh, evil done by uh, living people, uh, in this case, and, and we of the, uh, of uh, Bruce uh, Southworth's congregation, I don't understand. Uh, the sin is forgetfulness. The, the first sin is forgetfulness, yeah. Yeah. not uh, not uh, not remembering what we need to know about the people around us. That's great. Uh, yes. Can the word jibuk be translated into something that we know? I, I mean, I've known what a jibuk is always, but I knew it was to be a foreign word. Yes. Can it be translated, or well, it is never translated? We'll think about it before. We will think about it before it gets that very plain. There are synonyms for it. One synonym is spirit. Spirit. Yeah, but spirit has so many other meanings. Yeah, exactly. Dibbuk is much more specific. We'll fix it before the 25th. Yeah. Yeah, this is great. On February 25th, we have a lot to talk about. That's what I thought. We should steal about five minutes to today's time. That's great. Less necessary. Of course, there will be other people here, so we'll... Ger Gerald Morganless will be here, and he has made a study of this, um, and will also be examining um, 
the uh, uh, little, I mentioned the Little Vico Rock uh, uh, Opera. Well, you know, you know who the first person in America was that decided that he might write a uh, a Dibbuk opera? George Gershwin. 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 He was planning to write one, and then he heard about Rocca's opera and became discouraged. He wrote Porgy and Bess. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely true. Yeah. So that, I mean, there might have been a Gershwin Dibbuk, but there never was. There was the, the Rocca, which is an interesting piece, but it's not Gershwin. Yes. Dibbuk is not a devil. No. I was just talking to Anne. She said, "Well, not a devil." No, it's a it, it's a spirit, and it can it can be an evil spirit. And in that, in that sense, a devil, what is the devil? The devil is an evil spirit. An evil spirit. And the Dibbuk can also be an evil spirit. But the, the Dibbuk is not a devil, you know. In the particular a, uh, the case of Anski, yeah. it, it's uh, the most pious and most uh, scholarly achieving youth in the entire uh, realm that the people who populate the opera uh, have that becomes the Dibbuk. Uh, not an evil person at all. But, but, but he but, makes a pact with the devil in order to yes. get the riches that he thinks are necessary to impress the girl's father. It's not the devil so much as the Kabbalah, which is the, which which is the uh, uh, and then the apocrypha. I mean, mystic. The, the, the mystic. The Kabbalah the, 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 to get, get the contact with. Yeah, the, uh, and and uh, there's an interest now. Now there's, there's one other person who won't be here, but whose work we're going to talk about, uh, and it's, even though it's not really an opera, and that's Leonard Bernstein, because he wrote. Uh, a very important work of his called the Dibbuk, the Dibbuk Variations, and became a, 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 I told you, he was working on that when I played him uh, in his first, he, and he, he was working on it with um, uh, Jerome Robbins, and as I recall, Joe, uh, he was fascinated and um, uh, really obsessed with uh, gematria, numerology. Um, in fact, when I, the last time I saw him in October, uh, a four. Um, I said to him, you know, I, I just came up to him and I said, you know, isn't it time that maybe Idiots First had a, had a, uh, uh, a premiere, an orchestral premiere? It's been 11 years since this and 11 years since that. And he said, with all these 11s, do you think this is, has to do with gematria? And, what? And gematria. And that's when I looked at him and he said, numerology. And I knew what gematria was, and you do too. But, it, but it, it's, it's playing with numbers to try to get um, the, the most celebrated example of uh, playing with numbers uh, that I know in literature is in War and Peace, where uh, Pierre Pizzuchov decides that he, he wants to show that he's going to be the person that's going to kill Napoleon. And he keeps taking the letters of his name and Napoleon's and, 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 and in Russian, and it doesn't work in Russian. And then he does it in French. And he comes out with l'empereur Napoleon, le russe Pizzuchov. And it's the same number. If you, if you put the, the numbers of the letters together, it comes oh. out the same way. And that's the, he convinces me he's going to be the one to kill the boy, which of course he isn't. But th th this is this is the point that you take numbers to try to make things mean something. And this is what Bernstein was doing with the Kabbalah and with letters and numbers to find pitches that he would make modes out of. And it all sounded like Rimsky Korsakov anyway, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> that was my thinking at the time. But he, he really did. And, and we'll, we'll go into that a little bit. I have the recording of the book and we'll play some of it. I haven't got the story out of it. Yeah, he played the key number is 36. Okay. Which is twice high. Uh, That's right. Twice high, right. He finds that the, the numerology of Leah's name comes to, to 36. Right. And, uh, See? Yeah, yeah, the fact. Finds it three times 36 is, uh, is Hanon, uh, his <laughs> name, and that uh, uh -huh. Leah refers to comes, uh, El Ha, which meant not God, and uh, <laughs> yes, therefore yes. not through God, yes, yes. he's going to. But this is the command. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. 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 Nobody speaks Hebrew. Letters yeah. also mean numbers. That is the key. Good. That uh, when you write the word Hi, H I, it is the same as 18. That is why 18 and high right. means life, and That's 18 right. means life. And that is why the Jews give gifts. They give them as multiples of 18. 18, That's 18 right. 38, 36, like you just said, or 360. That's right. Uh, and uh, I think that is where the numerology comes That's from. That's right. That's right. Because and, and why and would somebody just Hebrew, pick a, a number? The, the Hebrew letters uh, and the culture in, among the Jews is much older than the use of Arabic. Yes, exactly. So for many years, for centuries, 
the way that they computed with numbers was with letters. Yes. So, so, so these letters really were the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you didn't think about that. Yeah. Okay. Wow, you've been a marvelous <laughs> audience and participants. Thank you so much for everything. And I hope we'll see you on February 25th. Bring more people. I have a particular reason for hoping you'll be here. One second. I'm one of the composers of Derek Brothers.